Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Alex Starcraft here telling you good afternoon, despite the fact that it is 8.30 in the p.m. And TLO a little bit delayed with his drones right there. I was kind of wondering. I was like, did I actually hit the play button? But no, he was indeed a bit delayed. You see, he's just like a teensy bit behind, just about six or seven seconds. But who knows? That might transfer into him losing the game later. But we will find out. This is, of course, another game from the TLO replay pack. This is the first Zerg versus Protoss I have uh, casted from that replay pack. He is, of course, in the top right-hand corner. I'm not sure exactly where this is replay is from. Probably not Korean ladder because I didn't see any names in Korean. But it could be Korean, could be Euro, could be North America. Either way, I am positive he's going to be Grandmaster and a positive TLO is going to put on a show for us. And then in the top left-hand corner... It is the red Protoss player, RS a Mentalist. I don't know if he is a known player or if I should know him. I do not. But once again, because of the ladder level that TLO plays at, well, RS Mentalist has to be right around there. And that is a pretty good and respectable level no matter what. So we're going to have to see what's TLO going to do this game. Because, of course, for so, so long, the standard in this matchup was that very fast Three hatch, gasless into Roachling, break your opponent. If you did not choose to do that, you could go uh, three hatch, gasless into uh, the Roachling defense if need be, or also Infestorus if they wanted to tech as well. So he's getting that 14 pool, standard, standard, but uh, the real difference will come when he gets the three hatches up. Three hatches up is almost um, a given. But then it'll come with his gas timings, and as a result of his gas timings, his uh, tech will change. If he gets them a little bit earlier, it... Oh, God. Now, is he going to commit for the full three? I guess he is going to commit for the full three, so that's unfortunate for TLO. He should be pulling all drones in a second here. Oh, no, but this is going to be... Whoa, TLO. Okay. So, he is getting cannoned out right here, and this is already turning into an interesting game. The thing you usually see Zerg players do when they get cannoned out like this, they grab all of their drones, and they do what's called a drone drill, which is when you get them all down here. If you click a mineral patch like this, you right-click it really fast, and then click a pylon, and right-click, then click a pylon, and right-click, then click a pylon, and a bunch of them will be able to attack it at once, and it will be able to break it. But only sometimes, and only on certain maps, sometimes when you click the mineral patches, they'll all go right here, and that's actually helpful, so it might be like over here, and that's like impossible. So he does uh, actually cancel that. Not sure why, because the probe... Oh, that's not a full wall, is it? So the probe actually gets up. Is that a full wall or not? Because how did the probe get up there? Unless he was uh, on the inside. But the probe goes up. And uh, he doesn't see any kind of break attempt. So what is TLO going to do? He's making a proxy hatchery. Or not a proxy hatchery, but another hatchery over here. He's just sending down this queen, which can actually um, not quite reach the cannon without revealing itself on the ramp, I don't think. But he does see his opponent's expansion timing, and I'm not sure what Teal's going to do. He could get some spine crawlers as a result of this, help pick things off. Uh, this will allow him to get more drones. He's getting a gas as well, so might go for a Nidus, something like that. Uh, but I'm not actually sure. It's interesting to see how different Zerg players handle this. Some tried to break it with roaches, some quit. Some, um, as I said, try to break it with roaches and then expand, which kind of try and transition into a kind of normal game. Very hard, because you will be behind on expansions. Some players um, actually just try and do a Nidus run play. And TLO seeming to remain very, very calm here. He does manage to kill the probe, and he's just getting queens. He's just going to break this down uh, pylon by pylon. So he gets one. Now he's getting the other, then he's going to go ahead and get the third one. He's making a queens two at a time. And TLO, are you going to go for some kind of crazy mass queen with insane creep spread strategy? That would make sense. And honestly, that would sound like classic TLO. He's also just making drones because he knows he needs to get saturated. So as soon as he has those extra expansions that he is able to go ahead and um, really get that economy going as soon as those hatches are up. Now, he's also killing three pylons for his opponent. So even though it denied his opponent's expansion, these didn't actually kill anything. So that's, you know, 450 minerals lost right there for RS Mentalist. The TLO now has four queens, and Mentalist is going to see that. He's just going to kind of be like, what? Why do you have so many queens? And there's double Evo Chambers, no Nidus Worm, no Lair. So we're not going to be seeing anything like that. I guess that is what all the gas was for. But yeah, he's doing a lot of creep spread. He has stopped with the queen production. He needs to make sure he's injecting with those because he needs to get larva. But yeah, he's got some crazy creep right here. My god, TLO, that's going to spread so fast. Watch when this pops. I just want to see it. As soon as he's pop, the creep is going to just be like out here in half a second. And yeah, as I said, just like that. 
So, oh, so quickly. So he's going to have some crazy creeps, but this is actually going to be interesting because with these queens and these creep tumors, if he just forcibly, if he just spreads straight across, he can be at his opponent's base by probably like the nine minute mark. There is a probe coming out and there are star ports coming out as well, or at least a star port. But of course, TLO with the Evo chambers already, with the queens already, should be able to defend against that Stargate without very much trouble at all the queen actually i think saw the probe there for a second and the creeps read so aggressive it's really going to help tlo out and with the proxy hatch already up he's a pretty solid drone count as a matter of fact he's only about four behind his opponent and i also think it's wise of the little one to only grab this natural expansion most zerg players would try and grab the third expansion because they say holy crap i need to macro but you don't have enough units, you do not have enough larva, there is no way you're going to be able to actually hold that third expansion when it comes down to it if the Protoss player decides to kill it. Otherwise they could decide to macro, in which case you'll just kind of be macroing from behind. So there's a Robo on the way as well, Hatchery being made into a lair, and I'm sorry I've not been looking at Mentalist's base too frequently so far, but of course all we really saw was just, you know, the cannons transition into Forge Fast Expand, following it up with a Stargate, then following it up with a uh, Robo. Nothing too, too interesting. He does have four gases, which the little one is probably aware of. This Overlord's still alive. Okay, well, he's aware of getting more than two. But I'm surprised that thing is still alive, considering this Phoenix on the field, and that might uh, head over and around there. But my god, look at the creep spread. Uh, not necessarily the best considering it's like 9 minutes, but considering it's 9 minutes and how the game started off, very impressive from TLO. He's up to 42 workers now, grabbing a third expansion. He has his lair, getting a few spore crawlers, just because, well, he sees the phoenix now, so he knows there is a Stargate in play. And is he going to go Roaches? Spire? What's he going to do? Spire would probably not be a very good decision considering his opponent already has a Stargate. But the problem is, uh, this is going to be a tough situation for TLO because, well, his opponent is getting both Stargate tech and Colossus tech. And normally, to go Colossus tech, you get... Or to kill Colossus tech, you go for Spire tech. To kill, um, to kill this tech, you go for not Spire tech but he's being forced into uh, picking a tech path that isn't really going to work for him. Now, he does have 2-2 on the way. That is one thing that can be said about TLO right now. His upgrades are phenomenal. And so, is his, uh, so are his injects and the number of larvae he has. He cannot spend everything floating. A uh, good amount of minerals there for a bit until he's able to spend them, but no doubt he will be getting a whole bunch of investors soon to help drain that gas. He's breaking down these expansions or these rocks not only help him grab the expansion, but help him with some mobility that's not through the center, but I don't know if Mentalist is aware of this creep spread. He is aware of the creep spread, and he's looking to grab a third. And TLO is looking to grab a fourth, so he is lucky. I would say, personally, um, in my experience, 99% of Protoss that are going to wall off your ramp with three pylons are just going to follow it up with like a five gate all in. They're never going to macro out of it, but TLO, uh, getting lucky, his opponent macroing out of it, not trying to come and kill him. Though there is a good chance, being TLO, that he would mention anyone. Oh god, Zerglings are gonna kill the expansion, maybe. No, not quite. Oh, very nice force units for Mentalists. They do make it. So these Zerglings are just going to die. They're not gonna force a cancel on the expansion. Oh, that sucks. Still trying to get them out, and they're all just dying. The Zerglings are like, no, let me out of here. There is a Spire on the way for TLO, of course, along with an infestation pit and a hive. So he's getting up there very, very quickly. He's up to uh, 52 workers now, so he has finally surpassed his opponent. But I'd not be at all surprised to see him continue to drone until, you know, uh, 65, 75, 85, 95, 105 drones. You can do a lot of insane stuff in ZVP. You get so many drones to really maximize your effect, and oh my god, is that embarrassing. We're just going to jump right back up to more or less where we were. See, the spire's in progress. Nothing ever happened. Lings were just cleaned up. Very, very cool. Hive just starting, and I don't know uh, how, I guess, oh, I clicked twice, and that's how I accidentally revealed it. You guys didn't see how long the game is. Shh. Pathogen glands now on the way, which will, of course, give those infestors the energy once they pop. Uh, extractors being made and mined off of Satilo, currently on 6 gas, but very soon he will be on 8 gas, and after that he can just as easily get up to 10, get up to 12 gases with a Broodlord Infestor and a good number of Zerglings to try and burn the minerals. But right now, he does not actually have the minerals. Still just droning and making just enough Zerglings so he could maybe hold off a push if there was to be one. 
But for the time being, you know, Mentalist is kind of sitting back. He's getting his Thermal Lance. He's getting, uh, of course, already has his Robotics Bay. Getting Colossus off maybe just the one Robo after he can get this Observer out. Because, of course, the Observer is so important to retaining that map control. And also, more importantly, really clearing the creep. My god, look at this creep right? It's just thrusting up the middle of the map. Starting from as soon as TLO broke free from the confines of his base, but he's still behind on supply because Mentalist has really started getting those heavy supply units like the Colossus that uh, just adds so much to your army. And uh, look at TLO's army. It's actually only Zerglings and uh, maybe a few investors sometime in the near future. And he's actually opting for Ultralisks and already has the Spire. And that would explain why he's getting these upgrades. So TLO has had some sort of crazy plan all along. And I have no idea what it is. So we're just going to have to wait and see exactly what's going to happen. The Creep Tumor is once again, unfortunately, being killed. Mentalist is mining off a third base. Has been for just a bit now. And TLO, mining off a third of himself, has been for just a bit. Going to be mining off a fourth of his own pretty soon as well. whole bunch of Zergling sitting up here. And I wonder if Mentalist is aware of these being broken down. No, he's not aware. Well, he knows that's at half health. He's not aware that those are broken down there. Getting a few free units there with the force field combined with the Colossus. Oh, so devastating shots. Creep being spread up into the base of Mentalist right there. So that's a little bit uh, a little bit interesting. Going to be kind of annoying for Mentalist. But he's going to come out here. He's going to try and sank this expansion. TLO doesn't even try and hold it. He just immediately pulls his drones. He says, oh, well, that's screwed. Now, Zerglings are running her by. Been trying to uh, threaten a counter attack. And oh my god, is Mentalist going to live that alive? Is he really going to save that expansion? Oh, TLO, you are such a baller if you save that expansion. And now Zolkin's getting in it. Oh my god, they're going to try and kill the Nexus. Now the probes are all being pulled, but they're not doing a whole lot of damage. Oh my god, the Nexus is falling so fast. Is it going to fall? Oh god, the little one gets the Nexus. Now he is up two base to four base, and when did this happen? Oh god, TLO. Now Mentalist is all of a sudden like, oh, holy freaking crap. He just lost his third Nexus and his main Nexus in about the space of 30 seconds with a very nice Overlord drop of Zerglings in one base and a run by in another. His units do have 2-2, two, two, which contributes to that so high attack speed. He has Ultras out here as well, which will, of course, negate those force units. Now he's looking to maybe drop up here as well, but of course has to be careful because Mentalist has caught on to his game at this point. But he still has his organs over here. He could get the Twilight Council before Blink is done, and if he does, that would be absolutely huge. Zealots being warped in, but the Zealots don't have that good upgrades. They only have plus one, so the Zergings actually going to destroy the Zealots as opposed to the other way around, as it usually is. So, he's going to clean all those up. He's stretching the army all around the map. He's unloading here, but the Colossus is going to absolutely destroy that. Uh, well, actually, maybe not. Zergang is good if they get underneath the Colossus. Now, these guys just tearing it up in the main base. He needs to just make sure he uh, maybe kills the Nexus. Or actually, if he kills the Twilight Council, that would also be huge. And these guys up here doing so much damage. And TLO is playing like a total Terran here, which makes sense considering I, uh, he did used to play Terran, or he used to play random as well. Bunch of uh, drones to a probes transferring back in, and the Zerglings are still in here. And they're just killing a uh, Zealot by Zealot, really, and eventually they are going to get cleaned up. But he's costing the Mentalist an extraordinary amount. He's lost so much less than his opponent in this game. Looking to drop back here, and his opponent's army is gone. And TLO, you are such a baller. Creep spread across the gap right here. I guess that's almost like a river. Um, creep spread jumping across that. So he has very, very good map vision right now. He knows everything that's going on. He's getting his own fifth or uh, sixth, fifth expansion up and running. He's getting some brood doors. He's getting 17 more drones, which actually isn't a huge amount. That'll bring him up to about 82, which is not um, at all abnormal for this matchup. But Mentalist looking like he wants to push out. He does have a mothership now. There were some transfuses going off somewhere. I'm not sure why. Uh, might be for that. He's actually uh, has an ultra in the Overlord. Oh my god. TLR, are you going to do what I think you're going to do? He could. Well, he might do it. It'll be hard to see if he does. But he might do Broodlords with ultra drops. Actually going to drop a queen. Um... Not sure where, but he really wants to spread some creep, evidently. The Mentor is re-grabbing this expansion as well. But what is this Overlord going to do? I wonder. Let's just watch it. See, it's making its way across the map towards the army, though. That might be unfortunate. 
Ooh, it's, whoa, it's actually spreading creep here on the high ground. What are you doing, TLO? Well, that will give him high ground vision no matter what. What is he, is he spelling something? L. Huh. Well, that's interesting. TLO, you are so strange. But oh, so cool. Is he going to like, do something over here now? That'd be really cool. No, he's not. He's just sending it right back. Um, spreading creep way up into his opponent's expansion. Now he's looking to actually start attacking it now that there's an observer there. But uh, TLO has come from being so far behind at the beginning to an army of nine Broodlords, six Ultras. Uh, are there any Infestors? There is no Infestors. That's weird. Well, a bunch of Ultras and a bunch of Broodlords. No Infestors, but... Um, he can get some if need be. He actually does not even have Pathogen Glance, so that's a bit interesting. Warp Prism coming around, but TLO should indeed see that and be fairly prepared for it. It's all going to come down to a big final battle. I don't know what to expect right here. More and more Broodlords being made since the TLO uh, does still have some spare supply. And uh, this Warp Prism is going to move out of range of that Spore Crawler. I'm not sure if TLO might have noticed it, but very easily... Uh, distracted by this huge body and battle in the middle is he and I know I would be too if this was going to be the case uh, here come the Archons and Blink Stalkers and Colossus to do with the plus 3 attack the mothership has plenty of energy for a vortex the thing being there's a bunch of overlords over here so even though he got that uh, Ultras uh, not quite as good because they actually don't take that splash damage they cannot clump up like the Broodlords can so that actually not the best uh not the best toilet for Mentalist. The one Archon comes out and dies very, very, very quickly. He's not even really mining off this base yet. And TLO is still with the hatchery that started it all, just chilling here in the center. Dark Shrine on the way, because what well, went behind Dark Shrine? My god, is it annoying. Mass changelings being pooped, just like in that ZVZ that I did cast the other day. Guys, if you don't know what I'm talking about, check out the playlist TLO replays on my channel and subscribe to me. And of course, then you'll be notified whenever I upload more of these replays. I am planning to try and get all of them out by Thursday. It is currently Tuesday. A whole bunch of Zerglings running in here, maybe just trying to be sacked for supply. Six more Corruptors on the way. This army looking very scary. And once again, there's High Templar, but like, what are they going to feed back? Well, nothing. There's no Broodlords. I guess maybe Overseers. What are they going to storm? Well, not Ultras, and the Broodlords are not clumped up. Now, the Broodlords are coming in from all sides as well. There are a few Overseers, which can he actually see? You can only see the units on the very edge. There is another, uh, another Vortex going down, but I'm not sure whether... That got very many of the units. He's trying to get his units in it, but there's still going to be Ultras here, and there's still going to be Brood Lords, and they're going to be doing a whole lot of damage. And when is this thing going to pop? God, this looks so good. Oh, God, there actually are a lot of Brood Lords in there, but the Archon's dying pretty quickly. Not quite getting all the Brood Lords, but getting a good number of them, but TLO is ahead on supply. He is a, a little bit behind in units lost, and whoa, it actually looks like Mentalist going to get the better of TLO in this game, but more reinforcing Ultralisks and reinforcing Corruptors. They're going to come in. They're going to kill the uh, the Colossus. And are they going to kill the Mothership? That's the next big question. Or even these Colossus. They are going to be killing all of the Colossus, so that is good for TLO. Because people underestimate the Colossus in the uh, late game Zerg vs. Protoss, because they just do... Despite the fact that it is an Archon Toilet, Colossus do more damage than any other unit. And have the potential... To really uh, put a Zerg in a terrible position. Now he is, uh, speaking of terrible positions, that is one of them. If only TLO had some investors, but no, he's just warding his opponent back bit by bit with um, slow Ling, or with Lings and Roaches, while he goes ahead and tries to re-get that maxed Zerg late game army that he loves so much. He currently has four Broodlords, two more in production, or one more, something like that. Um, that is a Broodlord, yeah, and the others are Overseers, I think. Where are the Overseers? Oh no, they are Broodlords. Okay, that's cool. But um, very nice for TLO, managing to pull this out. He's currently still up a base, but ooh, up a base, it's getting harassed a lot. He sends over a bunch of Zerglings, but I don't know if that'll actually be enough. The Ultra are gonna be doing very well against those Zealots, but the, with the Zergling support, should be in really good shape. He just needs to find a way to clean this up, and he doesn't actually have something that can really deal with it for right now. So that's unfortunate for him. He could continue to trade extremely cost efficiently up here, though. More High Templar coming down along with the Mothership, and he just needs to be very careful to not get a bad engagement. Of course, at the same time, the little one does, and he does not actually know that this expansion is going up, which is very important, no doubt. The Zorglings and Ultras running back and seeing what damage they can do with the Protoss army. 
I'm penetrating the enemy lines and gonna see what damage it can do. I'm not sure how much it can do. If it could snipe this expansion, that would be huge. He's one of the few left of mining for TLO, and that is gonna force him to move. He sends all his over uh brood lords, he sends his overseers, he sends his corruptors. This expansion is gonna fall, all these drones is running up, and he could actually just storm if he wanted to, but it seems as if he is gonna be saving that for something. Corruptors flying in, they're gonna see if they can pick off the mothership and might actually force a vortex, and yes, they do force a vortex that actually gets like three brood lords, like period and no Archons get in it. So that actually might be really bad for the Mentalist, uh, for RS Mentalist. He is still mining back home, but uh, while well, his army supply is significantly inferior to TLO's, because wow, TLO has like no workers left. Uh, that's why supply drops a lot, and TLO's army supply can just be so cost efficient, even without those infestors. Which still bewilders me as to why he does not have any. But Broodlord Ultra is generally a pretty desirable late game composition. He's just trying to totally box this opponent in here and just end the army that's here. Storm going off on the Broodlords, but it doesn't actually do that much damage. But Broodlings do for sure once they catch up with you, even though it takes a while. Just wants to make sure he doesn't unnecessarily lose any of these. So many Broodlords, my god. He's up to uh, 16 Broodlords right now alongside of one Ultra and a bunch of Overseers. But their zealots are just wreaking havoc all across the map right now. They're just running in, picking off tech structures, almost getting both of the Evo chambers. They're working on Hive, but I think they did get the Queen. Um, did they get anything else? They did not get the Infestation Pit. I don't think they got the Spire. No, they did not get the Spire. Tilo is too smart to put his very, very crucial tech buildings on that part of the map. But god, when is this game going to end? It has been going for so long. We're already 30 minutes in. Quite, quite impressive that uh, TLO actually managed to make it in this situation. Just honestly, when most players get that three pylon wall, they just leave the game because it is very frustrating and very, very hard to deal with. But TLO showing us why he is a world-class player and why his replays so deserve to be watched by you guys on my channel and casted by me on my channel. Now, is there an overlord? Uh, there are overlords up here, one with a few units that it can drop. But, uh, of course, the Zerglings do have the 3-3 now, as long with the uh, no Adrenal Glands, as a matter of fact. So they're not going to be quite as effective. But actually, looking at the minimap now, Tilo might be in some trouble. He has lost his expansions. He's down to three bases, one of which is mining. He's not retaking this one, he's not retaking this one, and he's not taking this one, while his opponent is still mining off one, two, three bases very strong, and we see he's pulled up about a 50 supply lead, and a good amount of that is an army, they're actually about equal in army, but he's about 40 workers more in TLO, he needs to be so careful here, he could end the game for himself if he gets one bad engagement, a whole bunch of Broodlords attacking, god, this is a lot of Archons right here, but I'm actually not sure whether, um, I'm not sure whether it's gonna be enough for, uh, RS Mentalist, unless he can get a really, really nice Vortex. So if we just take a look at the map, we see this game has been going for quite a long time. This looked like a main base, when in reality the main is this one, which is a little desolate, to be honest. Mothership is out on the field now, it's probably gonna, yeah, it's gonna head its way over and make sure that uh, the army can get a decent cost efficient trade. This is a lot of gateways he's got backing him up, so even if he does take a lot of damage more than his opponent, he can re-max pretty darn quickly uh, when it comes down to it. He's up on about 15 gateways right now. And no doubt that will benefit him. Now TLO has about 11 larva stockpiled, but once again, he doesn't really have money to spend it. You see he has nothing right now. We take a look at the incomes, 35 workers for TLO, 76 for RS Mentalist. He's down by about 1,000 on the mineral income and almost a half on the gas income. So uh, RS Mentalist just waiting so he can have enough energy on that mothership so he doesn't blow his big opportunity. And here we go, guys. As we approach the 33-minute mark, we might have the final engagement. TLO does not have a bank. He's not going to be able to remax. whereas RS Mentalist will be able to do a lot of warpins, even if it's only Zealots. Zealots are really, really good at this game, guys. Trust me. Now, TLO about to finish up his fourth expansion, but that thing is uh, getting close to being mined out, and that is all he's going to have once he gets it up and running, since this expansion is also very, very quickly getting mined out. And Mental is just waiting. He actually might opt to wait for two uh, Vortexes if he really chooses 
uh, to feel that way. Just because, well, that makes it so even if you mess up your first vortex, you got another try. It's fine. But he's slowly pushing forward, trying to opt uh, for a great position, trying to figure out where his opponent's army is, which the observer can kind of tell him. It's he's the shadow of the brood lord, as a matter of fact. Shadows look awesome, don't they? But here we go. TLO engaging with RLS Mentalist in the center of the map. Great feedbacks going down on some of the Infestors, which TLO didn't make, by the way. And now, oh god, almost all the Infestors no longer have energy. And then Mentalist just pulls back, warps in a bunch of Zealots, 11 Zealots at that fact. There's only one Infestor left with enough energy to fungal. Two Infestors, about to be three. War Prism is headed out. That is going to do some further harassing. My god, that hatchery is at such low health. I didn't even notice that. I don't know when that happened. Oh, it's just from the zealots up here. So these guys are going to run in. Are they going to kill it? No, they're not actually set to focus it down. There is another big engagement going on here, but TLO uh, still not looking so good. About equal on the army supply, though. About equal on the army supply. War Prism is running in here now. Going to see what it can do. Going to try and kill the queen. Bandings being warped or morphed in here to try and defend that, but I don't know if TLO can do that. You see he's just, he's actually lost less, but he's just been behind on economy for quite a while now. Blink under the Brood Doors is going to pick them off very, very quickly. The Infestor is getting some pretty good fungus, but I'm not sure how much it's going to matter. The Ultra will eventually make its way into the fight. One Vortex goes off on all the Brood Lords. Now the others are picked off by the Stalkers individually, and TLO falling down by about 40 supply right now. All the Archons can just get in the Starcon Toyota, and that will honestly probably end the game. TLO actually just shooting units over this, and that uh, Broodlings do not actually come out of it. But TLO throws out the GG, and for the first time in this replay pack, he is defeated. My god, what a game, though. What resilience playing off of that crazy three pylon wall at the beginning. Graham with some great creep spread. I hope all of you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to check out the other videos on this channel in the TLO replay playlist subscribe, follow me on Twitter at Alex Starcraft, and I'll see you guys soon with the next broadcast.